Oh, goody. Hey, guys. Good evening. Afternoon. Morning. Maybe if you're in New Zealand, I think. Um, so I was promised we were coming live with uh, Red Dawn's, uh, Red Fawn's sister, Red Dawn. Um, she's just wrapping up a call right now. So she's going to be with us in a few, few moments. So rather than be late, what I wanted to do was uh, just go ahead and start building an audience. Um, so as you guys come in, uh, why don't we say hello, see where you guys are all from. Hey, my friend from Iowa City. And then once you come in, if you can go ahead and share it, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be on my laptop as well. I'm going to be sharing this out into some groups um, so that we can get a really big audience. And uh, we do also have uh, Sophia Walensky's father just joined us. Uh, my good friend Philana, uh, Nana has uh, joined. Hey guys, so this is absolutely amazing. We've got 500, nearly 600 people on here right now. If you guys can go ahead and please share this as you're coming in straight away, we can get this audience up to a thousand plus before, uh, before we even start the interview. And uh, we've been sat um, talking this afternoon and I've got a, a couple of things uh, <laughs> that I've written down and stuff. So uh, I see we've got Oklahoma. Hi Terry. Hey Mercedes. Hey, you love mission. Wow, we've got a bunch of people coming in. If you guys are able to share this into some groups, and as you, I know this is going to be a little bit bitty to start this way, but I'm just going to go to my page and I'm going to share this to a couple of places as well that I know. Um, and I'll ask you all if you can, can you invite some friends as well, please? So I've got a few little places I'm just going to share this really super quickly because um, I manage a few different pages. And we really want to get as many people listening to this as possible because for those of you that don't know who Red Fawn is um, and what, what she's facing, um, she's facing um, some very, very serious charges. And there's a lot of things that you already know about the legal system in North Dakota and how the water protectors really haven't been receiving any fair, uh, been receiving fair trial up there or even fair representation. Um, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and... Uh, Make sure her story's out there because there's uh, a lot of fundraisers that have been out there. There's a lot of people that are looking for legal fees. There's a lot of money that's coming for legal fees. And there's been a lot of difficulty um, with people being able to use that money. Um, there's a lot of people that have been having to set up their own things and um, go ahead and be able to raise that money themselves. We've got England in the house, Max Wilde. Um, we've got my friend from Eau Claire. Good to see you. We've got Canada with us, Nova Scotia. That's amazing. I'm excited to see all these places. Uh, if you've got friends in other countries, please start, please start inviting them um, as well. What I'm going to do in the comments is I will go ahead and post, uh, and I'll also, my, my girlfriend Stephanie is going to um, be posting some things as well. So I will post a link. Um, I will post a link myself to um, the fundraiser as well for her um, because there is a fundraiser out there and we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, we see we have Asheville, um, North Carolina with us, Philadelphia. Um, so I know I repeat myself quite a lot, but people are joining right now. So what I'm asking you to do is to comment, like, and share. You got it, Eli. Fantastic. The Six Nations are with us in Ontario. Philadelphia, 15 minutes from Tennessee. Hey, D, good to see you, D. Listening from Wales. This is amazing, guys. Keep this, share, keep this sharing going. It's fantastic. If you know any big Facebook groups, get it live into those Facebook groups. Um, I'm just going to share it out to a few places that I'm uh, able to share it into. Um, there's some really big uh, Standing Rock groups. If people are members of those, please share that out there as well. Um, and uh, we can keep building this audience because we're up to over, we're over 750 people. This is a... Uh, this is great because, as you guys know, um, there have been so many arrests at Standing Rock of the water protectors. Um, and there's so many water protectors that are facing, you know, quite serious charges. But of all the charges, Red Fawn is, is, is the one who has the most serious charges right now. Um, so we want to talk to you about the story of Red Fawn. I've had a lot of people reaching out and saying, how can we help her? So we're going to be sharing some specific things that you can do to help. Because this is the story that no one knows about. This is the person that, you know, a lot of people aren't aware of exactly what happened. The people know that she went to court um, for some state charges and there's lots of things that have been spoken about about those charges. So what we want to do is we want to introduce you guys, let you know a little bit about who Red Fawn is, um, why she was at Standing Rock, what her beliefs are, 
what happened on that day, the things leading up to that day, um, and also to be able to then talk about what's happening now for her and what she's going to be facing in the future um, and how you guys can come on board. So that's fantastic. You've got 845 of you. Keep sharing this out. We're building a great audience. And, um, you know, I'm just going to be chatting with her, with her sister, Red Dawn. Now, Red Dawn isn't, um, she isn't a professional person who interviews all the time. She's just like you guys sat at home. None of us are professionals in this. We're just sharing the story. So don't expect like some professional interview. It's just going to be some friends talking. Um, if I refer to a laptop, there's a laptop down in front of us as well. Um, so, you know, guys, um, we're not journalists. We're just uh, we're just here to try and help do what's right and to uh, share to share this story and make sure it's known. So, um, whenever you're ready, if you want to come and sit on the couch with us here, I'll scoot across and uh, yeah, just come join us. We're just gonna have a chat. So, you guys, that for you that don't know, um, this is Red Thorn's sister. This is Red Dawn. Hi, Madaki Api Chaje Ni Chwaki Red Dawn. Um, Amachi Api. So, when did we first meet? Um, we met several, several weeks ago uh, down in Standing Rock um, when I first went down there to start advocating for, for my sister. So, in, in Lakota Way, Red Fawn is, is my sister. We're actually first cousins, but we've been raised as, as sisters. And so, I'm. Well, awesome. Well, why don't you tell us? I mean, you said she's. You're raised in the Lakota way, so mm -hmm. you're considered as sisters. Tell us a little bit about Red Fawn. How old is Red Fawn? So Red Fawn is in her uh, her mid thirties. She is a human rights advocate, a member of the American Indian Movement in Denver. She grew up in Denver, Colorado, and has been um, a, b a big advocate for Indigenous youth. She's completely committed her life to um, social and economic justice. Part of the reason she went down there was one, um, to defend Unchi Maka, Mother Earth, and the Mini Wachoni, but also in honor of her her mother, Troylin Yellowwood, who passed away um, this past June. So, um, and Troylin was a long member of the American Indian Movement as well, and again, just advocating for indigenous rights, a member um, attending the United Nations for several years. And mm -hmm. So they just come from a long history of people that are for indigenous rights, environmental justice, social justice, and our family has been involved in the American Indian Movement since the occupation of Alcatraz back in the 1970s. So we have a long history. Wow, so she really grew up around all of this, this yeah. was all, all in her blood, and yeah. um, that, that's amazing. So when did she first go up to Standing Rock? She went in early August when I, she had been there maybe a couple of days before the initial arrests were, were happening. Okay, so she got up there right. Mm -hmm. I know the initial arrests were around uh, on the 11th of August, and mm -hmm. I know there were some runners that had gone up there initially yeah. to Sacred Stone Camp that had the fire set mm -hmm. up. And yeah. Red, Red Fawn, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't she one of the very first people arrested, that first group of water protectors? Yes, she was. She was one of the first um, female Oglalas that were arrested there. And Absolutely, and that day, if I remember the arrest that day, they, they were arrested basically for praying and, and, and chanting on allegedly trespassing on, 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 on ground. There. Yeah, and th there's video that shows that they didn't actually pass the, the, the line, but um, they, were, you know, they were arrested. And it was um, pretty, it was a lot different dynamic then. Um, it's since escalated. Absolutely. So, I mean, you mentioned it was a different dynamic. So mm -hmm. when she first got up there, being one of the first water protectors, mm -hmm. there were literally, what, 50, there were maybe there hundreds, were 100, there were 100 yeah. people up there. Mm -hmm. And that they have been there since probably April. Um, right. In April, and she went there and immediately, just because of our family's history, was really just welcomed and became a part of the Sacred Stone Camp and um, was a was identified as one of the early leaders and working with a lot of the indigenous youth there. So Ab absolutely, because it was the indigenous youth, it was the International Indigenous yeah. Youth Council mm -hmm. and the Standing Rock uh, Sioux Tribe youth that actually started this whole movement. Yes, yes. So, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk up a little Sorry, bit. Sorry, I'm a bit soft-spoken. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, thank you. Um, so, 
Let's fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she got arrested on the eleventh, and she, she, like everyone else, she was yeah. she was bailed out. Mm -hmm. What what did she see kind of happen? What do you know about the things that happened up at Standing Rock um, after that point? Well, there was a there was a lot. I mean, the majority of the time, people were just really living at the camp and supporting each other, getting awareness out, educating people, and um, just living within the community. So it. There's a lot of sensationalism of kind of the events that happen, but on your day-to-day -day thing, it was just really beautiful, and people were living there, living off the earth, living a sustainable um, lifestyle, and getting to know each other, and promoting um, information, and prayers among each other, and just you know, encouraging the youth to look at this alternative, um, just alternatives to the oil industry, and everything so yeah absolutely I know when I got up there one of the very first things I did was I went mm -hmm. on a forgiveness march to Mandan mm -hmm. now I think this would this would have been after the clearing of the north camp which happened um, that was back on October 28th 29th was so it? yeah so October 27th is the day that the police raided the 1851 treaty camp this okay was Red Fawn's camp and also on the front lines so um, that kind of that's when she was arrested, and there, I heard that she had been pretty much attacked, is what, what I got the call, like, I needed to get here, your sister's been attacked, um, we, we think that she's been injured, you need to get here, and I was in, where, where were you? I was in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, Okay. so um, she was kind of advocating and representing our family there, and we would go up periodically when we could, but she was the one staying at the camp. And so I go up on, that was a, a Thursday, Friday, I can't get any information about her, I can't find her, I looked online, called the the, the jails, uh, Martin County Jail, and no information. So she was so arrested Thursday? Thursday. And yeah. you were looking for her on Friday. Friday? Looking for her on Saturday, as well as Sunday, and it wasn't until Monday that... Um, so Ford, you Four days yes, yes. before you knew where your sister was, yes. having been told that mm -hmm. the last union that, that she had been attacked and she was hurt, and that she had been shot with rubber bullets um, on on her body, and that she had looked like she was had been injured. So of course I'm very concerned, worried, trying to find out any information about her. It wasn't until Monday that this narrative was released, and um, and since then the narrative has changed quite a bit. The first thing we heard is that. She was um, targeted and pummeled, and that she had grabbed a police officer's weapon and fired it. And so it's it's changed several different times. So initially, you're saying with the narrative that first came out, and I, this is certainly mm -hmm. something I had heard, was yes, yeah, she was accused of grabbing an officer's weapon, yes. and and, and mm -hmm. that was that was a charge. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's that's kind of changed yeah. a little bit. So yeah. what was she? She was first. So what was she first arrested for? Was so she arrested she was federally or, or arrested she, by the state? She was arrested by the state, and she was charged with attempted attempted murder. Attempted murder. Uh, attempted murder. And, okay. Um, and then at that arraignment, she those charges were undocketed, which means that they still can bring them up. That I think that the media has um, kind of shaped this as those charges were dropped. They have not been dropped. They have just been put to the side while federal charges are being pursued, and um, those can come back at any point. Okay, so, so she's she, on one hand, you said she's charged with attempted murder right. on the on right. the state side, which right. is from everything I've seen and heard is mm -hmm. is quite a stretch to kind of try and prove. Just mm -hmm. for there's a lot of video out there. I'm sure you guys out there have seen some of the video of her arrest and what happened there. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things around that that would make um, that would make attempted murder a, pr a pretty hard charge. So that was the state charge. Yes. So it was said that at her trial the state charges were dropped. That was yeah. what was said. So that's and that's inaccurate. That's inaccurate. They, they have not been dropped. They've been undocketed, and they can basically come back at any point. So essentially, she's looking at the potential of ten years federal charges. What was she charged? So federally, what did they, what did they come up um, with for federal charges? So for felony um, possession of a firearm and okay so that they will pursue those charges in federal court and then at that time they can then pursue the state charges for attempted murder which would be an additional up to 20 years so she's potentially looking at 30 years I mean this is this is very very massive and you know when we were shocked 
because attempted murder, um, this wasn't, this was never about the water protectors against the police, against Morton County, against the citizens of North Dakota, against the residents. Those are the neighbors. This is about water protectors and corporate interests. And so nobody wants to hurt the police. Nobody wants to have this dissension between our neighbors in North Dakota. Right. You know, we are all just wanting clean water for our grandchildren's grandchildren. And she understood that, you know, as, as indigenous people, we are born into a legacy of struggle and resistance. And we're gifted the responsibility to defend and protect Unchimapal and, and Miniwichoni, Mother Earth and the water. And Red Fawn takes that stewardship very seriously and has committed her life to protecting it through prayer. So the fact that they've tried to shape this as being negative, and, and that is part of the narrative. They, from the beginning, tried to shape what is happening in North Dakota at Standing Rock as, as violent, and it wasn't. It was always through prayer. And you'll look well, you at said you were, at, sta you said you were yes. at Standing Rock on mm -hmm. and off. So tell me a little bit about what you saw at Standing Rock, because the, they, the story is, you mm -hmm. know, that these are protesters, mm -hmm. they're rioting, mm -hmm. you know, this is yeah. the mainstream media story. Yeah. I spent around a month at Standing mm -hmm. Rock. You've been backwards and forwards, so what did you see? And I'll talk about some of what I saw. So that experience there is something that I've never experienced in my life before. It's a type of energy that is, is hard to describe, but you can feel it. And once we, once we got there, I, I knew that this was the beginning of a fundamental shift in not just people, indigenous people or people here, but worldwide consciousness of how we're living our lives and the fact that if we do not change our dependency on oil, we're going to impact Mother Earth so greatly that we're destroying our water, we're destroying our land, and it's gonna impact our, our survival. You know, the Earth. Um, we're probably not going to destroy Mother Earth in the sense that she, she it will continue, but we may destroy it to where we're, we cannot inhabit it anymore. Absolutely, we'll end up exterminating mm -hmm. ourselves. That's and why I've, I yeah. feel too. And just feeling that energy and knowing that um, this is the beginning of, of a shift in consciousness and people's commitment to looking at alternative energies, to collaborating, talking to each other, looking at indigenous worldview and perspectives and knowing that there is a life that can be lived that's more in balance you know we are very heavily energy dependent but there is a way to live in balance and not I mean stop buying plastic bottles water bottles I mean that is the most ridiculous concept bottled water and plastic stay away from it the oil and the water that's used to put the water in plastic bottles it is not sustainable it, it's all about profit and then the plastic bottles are are you know, we have landfills that could cross the earth, um, you know, three times with plastic bottles. So, you know, what's funny to me while we're talking is this is this is about your sister Red Fawn, but you're so you're so concerned about the environment and about the whole movement and why people mm -hmm. were there that even though your sister sat potentially facing up to thirty years in prison, you're still advocating for the right, the the better way to live, to take care of this mother earth. And to me, that speaks absolute volumes absolute volumes well you know part of that is that's who we are it's ingrained in the way we've been raised and we've had this connection to mother earth since the moment we're born and her her lakota name that she received in ceremony is good-hearted woman and it's chante um wash day we which means good-hearted woman and she's lived her life in that helping other people protecting the mother earth protecting the water and even though our family is going through a really difficult time and we're, I'm, I'm very nervous and afraid for this, she has always stayed strong and positive in saying that I, I'm doing what I can from here to send out love and energy and protect the earth and I know that I'm innocent and I know through prayer and people's collective prayer that I will be set free. So focus on this movement because that's why she believes she's there is to bring awareness to this movement. As her sister, I'm asking please pray for her and support us in a way that we can advocate for her so that 
she's not looking at 30 years in prison because just to have clean water. Right. It's and it's really tragic that she sat in this in this circumstance for sure. Now, I know that with Standing Rock, there's been a lot of money that's come in in a lot of different ways. And um, there's many different ways and many different GoFundMes. And there's many different funding sources. There's a lot of money that's come into legal and people have found it hard to access uh, money for legal. So in order to be, really be able to support Redform, what, what is it that she needs at, the, at this point? Does, does she have like a really great attorney on, on her side that knows the law inside and out and can, can represent her and at least make sure she gets a fair trial and has the best legal representation possible? You know, unfortunately here in the U.S., justice does not happen just because you're innocent. It really depends on the type of resources you have access to. And in order to ensure that she gets the justice that she she's entitled to, people have said, you need, you need OJ's team. You need OJ's defense team. And with that, that comes a lot of, we need a lot of resources mm -hmm. to be able to put, have the best legal team in place. Um, People have said that we're looking at a really long battle and probably need between several hundred thousand dollars to ensure that she gets the representation and the justice that she needs. Um, so what do you think it would take to get that? So, I mean, there's, I mean well, right we now have, we've got... We have the some... generosity. It's the free red fund, at freeredfund.com and there's a link to the generosity for free red fund on there. And we've been successful in raising about... It's forty. It's, it's, 40, it's, it's 40, nearly nearely forty-eight thousand. Forty-eight thousand dollars. Yeah, that. in which that will um, we need the funds to have the top attorneys as well as a private investigator, and then just everything else that goes along with advocating for her well-being and making sure that the information is getting out there. Like um, she's asked for me to go to Oak Flats to um, deliver her statement in support of solidarity and them protecting their sacred sites from mining. So I, let, we were talking about this earlier, and for you guys that don't know about Oak Flats, um, it's down it's down in Arizona, and it's regarding the mining rights, and it's regarding um, there was a rider on a bill that was slid through to allow, basically to allow the exploitation of mm -hmm. of mining rights by yeah. foreign companies. For, Very, yeah, Australian companies. Um, so this was done. Now Redfawn sat right now in fed, in federal jail, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And rather than worrying about her future, she's writing a statement to be taken to Oak Flats to be read. Um, we're going to be, I'm actually been invited to head down there with, uh, with Red Dawn. Um, we're going to be going down there in the next day or so to read this statement on behalf of Red Fawn and to document that. So this girl who's facing, you know, not being able to come out of jail until she's in, near enough in her 70s is still sat, in, sat there advocating for this movement that she's cared about since she was since she was tiny so that again to me speaks volumes so one yeah you're right we need the world watching because if the world is watching i mean yeah hundreds of thousands of dollars sounds a lot of money but you know if we can get a million people watching this talking about this it's a dollar each five dollars here ten dollars there so Earlier on, there were some questions I know that people have had about money coming in um, regarding regarding uh, being tax deductible, regarding being a non-profit. So right now, the funding source that set up the generosity is set up by her younger sister. That money is coming right in. Now, she is in talks with attorneys about setting up a non-profit or using a non-profit. So if anyone who's watching right now has a wants to be able to donate a larger sum of money we're going to set put an email in here for you um just use do you have free a, red fawn uh-huh at gmail so free red fawn at gmail.com mm -hmm. if you want to put that in there in the comments for us stephanie um and if anyone has large wants to make larger sums of money um they can message there and make sure that that's sent directly so it's through a non-profit we're also going to put the, the funding link for generosity in the comments. Stephanie will do that in a second for us as well. Or if anyone out there is already on the free Red Fawn site and wants to click on that donate button, go to the top to the URL, copy and paste it and put it into the comments here. That would be perfect. Because um, I can see we've got like 670 people watching. 
I'm going to ask if you guys can share this right now because this needs to be kept being shared and to, to let people know. And, you know, this money that's coming in is purely going to be used for the advocacy, everything around this case. So it's going to be both the legal fees, but it's also going to be the ability to talk about Red Fawn's story to make sure that this doesn't happen. She doesn't get railroaded, that she does get a fair trial. Because the most important thing that you guys out here can do right now that are watching, this is where you come into it. If no one's watching, then things can happen behind closed doors very easily. But if all the eyes are right on that and they're asking questions and people are watching this courthouse, watching the procedure, seeing what's happened, it's much, much harder for this to be slid under the rug and just kind of pushed to one side. So that's why we're asking you guys to share. If you can give, give. That's fantastic. If you can't give, share. Share the link. Share the website. Share the story. Because by doing that, more and more people get to hear about it. Because there's still people, when I posted about, do you know who Red Fawn is? People say no. So we want everybody to know and to stand up and say, hey, this isn't right. Because imagine if this was your daughter. Imagine this is your daughter facing up to 30 years for simply standing up for what she believed in. How would you feel? What would you want? Would you want the best legal representation? Would you want everyone to know about it? Because at the end of the day, we are all connected. We all come from the same place and we all go back to the same place. We come from the earth, we go back to the earth. So we're all connected in that way. So what we do to one, we do to all. So I don't know if there's a Twitter. That's a great question. Is there a Twitter right now? Um, we, we do not currently have a Twitter. I think that they're working on that. I, um, all of us are very new to this. We are we're right. not prepared to really advocate this. We're basically a small family with very modest means fighting a corporation and their interests and I just you know, at times it can be overwhelming and we would we re reach out and ask for any type of assistance that we can get monetary prayers um, technical assistance anything like that just I think one thing that Standing Rock has really shown is that collectively we're very very powerful and that's <laughs> Absolutely. So there's some more things. If any of you guys out there are, are Twitter kings, if you know how to use Instagram, if you would, if you would want us to donate time and help with an Instagram or help with a Twitter account. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she has good. a prayer out. She has a statement out there. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. That's all right. We're just, uh, and as I said, this is really rough. This is just a chat on a sofa. Um, this isn't a professional studio thing. This is using a, this is using some equipment that was donated by iographer. Um, this is using a cell phone. So if the sound quality is not great, and if this doesn't seem super professional, it's not because I'm not a professional. And you know, Red Dawn here isn't a professional advocate. She's just a, a family member who cares deeply about what's happening and wants to see the best for for her sister. So we're really grateful for you know the people that are watching. And we're, we're going to ask you again to put this out into groups. Make sure this goes into the big Standing Rock groups. You know, we or can anybody all... Anybody who's worried about the earth, social justice, environmental justice, who wants to make sure that this, this young woman doesn't lose 30 years for peacefully protecting water. And... Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, surely some of you out there, maybe you played football in school with a high school, a high in high school and now one of those guys is on a big football team out there or maybe you know you used to go to school with someone and they're an a actress or an actor any of these big connections because it may not be that you can physically give anything but all of you out there have got a piece that can help bring this together and if you just bring that connection if you've got connections like that send them to freeredfawn at gmail.com you can send them to me as well if you want to message me you can throw in my email if you want stephanie as well i'm happy to happy to help in any way um, and we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this story going. Um, we're going to head down to. Um, we're going to head down to Oak Flats in a day or so. And unfortunately, down there, I don't think there's going to be the ability to live stream like this very easily. But we're going to share the story. We're going to video that statement being read and talk about that because people need to understand like who Red Fawn is, what what she, what she stands for, um, and and make sure that she's not forgotten and that we do everything. Um, if there are other videos out there, um, if you go to freeredfawn.com, you can see there's a couple, I think there's three links on there to news articles that were done. 
If any of you guys out there are connected with radio or television, again, send the information through letyoursoulplay at gmail.com. Happily go and, and do radio interviews, TV interviews, anything to get this story out and talk. Maybe you're a lawyer. Maybe you're an attorney out there who really wants to do the right thing and could offer their time for free or knows someone that would offer their time at a very small fraction of the cost. You know, any of that kind of stuff to do that. Because if one person ends up spending up to 30 years in jail for just standing up for the planet, it's not right. And, and with that, you know, we want to know that when people go and stand as peaceful, prayerful water protectors, that that support system's there to protect them. And you know, in my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion, this is not the family's opinion at all, but I'm going to speak from my personal opinion now. Lots of money has come in, earmarked for legal fees, earmarked for helping people. Yet, here we're sat, literally begging and asking people out there to help this one cause, because that money that's come in isn't going where it needs to go. It's not flowing. So we need, we need, we need that support. We need the people who are watching right now. If it's only five dollars, it's five dollars. Knocking those off five dollars at a time will make a huge, huge difference. Because it doesn't take that many five dollars from hundreds of thousands of people to make sure that she has what she needs, that legal representation. And you know, I know I'm guilty of it. You know, people grab a coffee without thinking about it. Yeah, I am going to tug on your heartstrings right now. And maybe some of you won't like this, and I'm sure I'll see the comments you don't like it. But people will go and spend $5 at Starbucks in the morning to get a coffee. But they don't put $5 towards something like this to make sure a young woman doesn't spend the rest of her, her good years of her life in jail for standing up and protecting the planet for future generations. Absolutely, there's free, free Leonard Peltier. A case in point, exactly, the person who put that makes a lot of sense because that's what we don't want to happen here. We don't want her to become the female Leonard Peltier. And the irony of that is she will be in the same court that convicted Leonard Peltier. He was, he was convicted in North Dakota in Bismarck Federal Court. And if you look at that case, it's, there's a, it, it was very problematic. So, I mean, my sister is a political prisoner of Standing Rock, trying to, trying to defend the earth and water and access for our grandchildren's grandchildren to have healthy, clean water. So I hope you guys caught that because that was really chilling. Um, so Leonard Paltier was convicted of his crimes, alleged crimes that, you know, as we all know, he's not guilty. He just won't speak up for the person that was. Um, he was convicted in Bismarck, North Dakota, in the very same courthouse that's going to be trying Red Fawn and Fallis. So guys, this is why this is so important, because I don't want to be making videos in 10 years' time to, to try and get Red Fawn and Fallis out of jail and talking about her case and how that she got railroaded by the system. So what you're doing today by joining this um, it, is amazing. Um, and really thank you for, for coming on board and being with us. Um, what I'd like to do now is actually open it up for a few questions. Um, Stephanie, can you keep an eye on the comments and feel free to shout any of them out? I've not done this before, so it's going to be kind of hard because these comments are going crazy um, and they come through really quickly. Yes, she is at Stutzman County. We'll have the the um, address. Um, she, when she was arrested, they tight they tied the rope ties around her arm really, really tight, so she has nerve damage, and so she's she says it, it's she's got a lot of letter support, which she loves, um, but just returning letters has is a little bit slow. So there's a you're able to set up a texting or email account through the Stutzman County, um, and we'll have the links to that as well to show that um, if you want to send text messages or voice messages or set up video conferences, we'll have the link to that, and you can do that. Cool. And, yeah, and, and that's one of the things. She, it's so it's good for her morale. She loves getting just words of encouragement, knowing that uh, you know, what she's doing is making a difference, and she people are out there learning about how to protect the water, learning about 
traffickers and indigenous rights and social justice and environmental justice so that's cool so what we'll do we'll do on an, we'll do it on this post as well but we'll also do another post where we specifically have some action points and if you want to contact red four in different ways that you can do it um that would be amazing texting her sounds great a video i'd like to do a video conference let's uh i'd love to see if i can make that happen um and for those of you if you didn't catch that they said that they put the the the, the uh, ropes around her so tightly when they arrested her that they did nerve damage to her hand so you so know writing after a while starts to hurt yeah, so the writing side's difficult, so the texting and the video the video conferencing. And I'm sure after this and we get that information out, there'll be an influx of you guys wanting to do that as well, which will be great because, you know, she's supporting everything that's going on outside. So to have that coming in is, is going to be amazing. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, we'll get you that information. What about other questions? I'm sure there will be lawsuits. I saw the comment of lawsuits. I'm sure that down the line, once, once she's shown to be innocent and once she is released, and once she has her freedom, I'm sure lawsuits will be something that would follow that. Um, go more into the case. Um, I would love to, we would love to go more into the case, but what we're being very careful to do here is we don't want to do anything that's going to damage her case at all. So talking about specifics from pre-trials, talking about specific things, um, until we have a go ahead and, we've, and it's been spoken about with legal representation that has the knowledge of these things to say yay or nay to speaking about it, it's better that we don't, um, that we don't go into things completely. Um, there certainly are some things out there that I've, been, that, that I've heard about on the grapevine um, that cast a lot of doubt around the charges that have been put in place. And again, I'm not speaking from any legal standpoint. I'm speaking from my heart and about what I've seen and what my gut says. Um, but as for factual things at this stage, there's nothing I really want to speak specifically on the case. Once we've spoken with a lawyer and, and, and got that in place and there's permissions, happy to share. And we'll con I will continue. I, I will give you my word now that we'll continue with this story mm -hmm. until, she, until she does have her freedom and yeah, with whatever we can do along, uh, along the way. And when we can speak about things, I will happily make, make the way to speak about that with you. Yeah. Um, she's wanting to know if she's been allowed visitors and if she has her glasses. So um, she, she does have some glasses and I think that we're working on getting her a pair that's not broken. They're some broken ones and they're, they're taped up. So we're working on that. Um, the, the, Visitors are through video conference, so you're able to video conference her. You can set that up, um, and we'll also have a link to that website where you can set up a video conference and the website to request video video visitations. Um, so there's no physical visitation. There's no, yeah. Wow. So there's yeah. no physical visit. There's, yeah. There's what? no. There's no physical. Um, one of the things that she said that really touched my heart is when she was going to one of her um, preliminary hearings. They woke her up and it was about five o'clock in the morning and they took her outside and she said it was it was really cold and but just smelling fresh air and feeling the goosebumps and everything that she just it was like almost sweet a sweetness in the air because she's been locked up since October 27th without natural light without fresh air without anything that we take for granted just having our living you know everyday living existence and it made me really sad to think of one, how we treat prisoners in general, and two, the fact that my sister, she went to Stanley Rock in honor of her mother, Troilyn Yellowwood, to, in, in a good way. She went there to protect through prayer, and she's committed her life to helping other people, and now she's here, and just a simple thing like having fresh air is a luxury. Mm. So she said that it was that she was really cold, but when she felt the goosebumps, all she could feel was just goodness. And I guess it's the things you don't think about. You know, you hear someone's inside, and you don't really think about what that entails. And they're inside right now, trying to protect clean water for future generations, and they end up not having the freedom to breathe fresh air, to go outside and see the sunshine. And that's that's what those people are putting on the line, and that's what she's put on the line. And still, she's going ahead and advocating for other things around the country. Um, I, can't, I can't wait to meet her. She sounds like an incredible, incredible woman. And yeah, it would be an she, honor she's, to her. she's very empowering. Her words is, are just, 
she's able to give people hope and that that is what made her so so targeted such a target yeah. let's talk about being targeted actually because there were some interesting things that happened and you guys probably know the story as well let's talk about some of the people that we've seen arrested and what's happened um do you guys all know amy goodman for democracy now she got arrested shailene woodley got arrested the one of the main people who started the Red Warrior camp was arrested. Cody Hall. Cody Hall. Mm -hmm. Red Fawn was arrested. Now let's look at what's happened to those people. Amy Goodman was charged with inciting a riot because she had there was so much media coverage of it. So many people went to the court that ended up getting thrown out. Shailene Woodley never wanted to be arrested. She was targeted and arrested because she brought massive attention to that to that encampment to that movement the same for Cody Hall so these people that were leading the movement these people that were putting their voice out there those people who were putting their faces on the movement who were advocating they're the ones that were targeted so Red Fawn was considered and these are my words again it was considered a danger in the sense that she was able to connect to people so she she was a danger because she was helping people see through the see through the mist and understand what this issue was, why the police were stood there protecting, and what, why there was the protection for the pipelines. There was no threat to property there. There was no threat to there was no threat to the police's life. The 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 threat was to preventing the black snake from going and from a few people making a lot of money. That was the threat. And Red Fawn could see that and she could speak about that in a manner that empowered other people to stand up in peace, in prayer. To give them hope, to give them hope and to show that we're making a difference. That, you know, her words are powerful, that, that her words are what her weapons were. And, you know, she had also asked me to ask everybody, don't feed the black snake, don't feed the snake divest your money from Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, and others that are financially supporting this because it, this is about economics. This is about economics. It's corporate interest, you know, re utilizing our resources to make massive amounts of profit, and it, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we can live in balance, and so what we can do as individuals is, you know, pray, put that energy out there, there, you, we can feel it. You felt it. You feel what the difference Standing Rock has been in the energy that we take once we're there. We take away with us in that collective fundamental change in consciousness that is happening across the world. And, you know, Standing Rock was one of the catalysts to bring that. Yeah, absolutely. So, but as individuals, we have our prayer. We have that energy. It's making a difference. We can choose not to buy bottled water. We can choose to carpool and limit our dependency on uh, unsustainable resources um, for energy, oil, and gas. We can, as individuals, take our money out of banks that are funding this. I mean, we should be putting our money in local credit unions anyway, because locally we should be empowering our local community everywhere. So look at your, your community banks and um, credit unions to put your money there and, and stop supporting this the, these corporations that are damaging our earth and it's going to make it unsustainable for us to continue to live like this. So when did Red Fawn ask you that? When did she ask you to tell people to, to stop funding the Black Snake? So she got word about the Viking the Vikings, um, the U.S., the banner. The banner of the, the Vikings, yeah, yeah, which, that was awesome. which, which was amazing. It was the perfect way to start out my, my New Year's. I mean, it, this is a hard holiday. I mean, my, my little sister is, is in jail, and her mother just passed away, her grandmother just passed away right before that, all within the same year, and now she's sitting in jail. So this has been a very, very, very hard holiday season for our family. And I spoke with her later that night, and she just was, you could hear the energy in her voice, and she goes, I heard about it, I saw the banner. I mean, I heard about it, I heard about the banner. Send, take a picture and send it to me. Send me a picture. And, you know, I could just feel that energy. And when I saw it, I said, you know, this it's changing. People's consciousness are changing. And there's this unity that's going to support this. So for all you people out there, the people that have questioned Red Fawn, 
I just ask you again to look at it. Because this person sat without their freedom right now. And they still care more about the movement, more about what's happening with the movement than they do about themselves. Just think about that for a second. And as we're drawing this to a close, you know, we'll take a few more questions if there's any, any, any more questions out there. I'll certainly go through these comments tonight and uh, supply some of the information people have asked for. Do you guys have any, any more questions? Um, we'll give you a few minutes to put the questions in. Maybe, maybe while the questions are coming in, why don't we just sit for a minute? Just sit for a minute and send our love to Red Fawn. Will you guys do that? If you're going to do that with us, can you just hit the heart button right now and share this and share this video out? Share this live stream? So I want to see a bunch of hearts now. We're going to send love to Redfawn. That's beautiful. You know, thank you. Lila Wopila Tonka, thank you so much. You know, from my heart to yours, thank you for not letting my sister be forgotten. amazing you know she told me a story that when everybody surrounded the Morton County Police I mean Morton County Jail and was praying for her she said that she could smell the sweet grass and she could feel the energy so the energy is real you know we're, we're making a difference we're collectively putting it out in a higher consciousness and she's able to feel that so that was one of the most beautiful one of the most beautiful moments at standing rock for me I just got there that was the first I want to say that was the first day, first morning, and that was the first action I went on, and I went on that forgiveness march, mm -hmm. and it started in the park with the huge prayer circle, and um, mm -hmm. there was some famous, there was actually a couple of famous people there that were talking, and then it went down to the, into Mandan, and they circled all around the building, and we, we, we sent love to Red Fawn. But there were also five speakers. I believe her uncle was a speaker that day yeah. as Robert well. Upham. Yes. Yeah, Robert and Upham. That he's, was one he's still in Standing Rock. He's doing a lot to advocate for her. Yeah, and that was one of the first things that I got to live stream when I was at Standing Rock. And it was, it was so powerful because there were, there were the people that had been persecuted. There were the people that had been had rubber bullets, tear gas, mace. They'd been, they'd been just abused in every way by the very people that were supposed to stand serve and protect and here they were all going to the morton county jail and shaking hands and telling these officers you know we forgive you you don't understand we know you don't understand what's happening we know you don't understand the damage that you're doing not only to yourself but to your families by by destroying the sacred land there by digging up the ancestors and we don't hate you we love you and we forgive you. We don't like what you did, but we offer our forgiveness to you. And I, that was one of the first things I got to see at Standing Rock. And it was incredible. And here's the exact same thing. Red Fawn sat in jail without her freedom. And she's still asking people to advocate. She's still asking people to, you know, to divest from, from, from Dapple. She's thinking about the movement, not herself. So that's why in my heart, I know without a doubt, the Red Fawn is innocent. And that's going to be proven. And with your help, this story is going to be shared. So thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you so, so much. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we can continue just sitting and chatting if there's some questions that come up. I did notice something about T-shirts. Um, who, who out there, Who out there would like to... Um, Wear a t-shirt to support Red, Red Fawn. I see a lot of hearts right now. Um, maybe that's something we could use to, to fund her, fund her legal, um, help with her legal fund. Um, so if you'd like a t-shirt, why don't you comment yes on this feed? I want to see how many people out of the 566 people still here would wear a t-shirt. So yes, or I'd love one. Let's let's see those comments coming in, and then, I mean, you've got a design, I believe. Yeah, we do. Um, so on the freeredpond.com, there's a section there that we can um, order T-shirts, I believe. So, and if there's a mass order, 
um, that that's even better because it makes the the process easier. Okay, so let's look. If you're an art, if if you're an artist, if you're a screen printer, if you're someone out there who would like to donate T-shirts, who would like to donate their time doing the screen printing, um, feel free to send a message to freeredphone at gmail dot com. Please feel free to send me a message at letyoursoulplay at gmail dot com. Let's uh, uh, let's find a way to get these T-shirts done. It's great if you can buy them through the website, but I bet there's someone out there right now who could go ahead and actually. Do the t-shirts for free. Maybe give the t-shirts for free. That way, a hundred percent of the funds that come in from the t-shirts can go straight to Red Fund's legal fees. Any other questions? Let's find a way to get this high profile. There's a lot of people wanting t-shirts. I love it. Um, I've seen people mention about Dean, um, who was arrested, the drone pilot. I don't have specific news about that. And at this stage, I've heard a lot of things about it. But one thing I don't want to do is spread rumor, so I'm not going to talk about that. I do know he was arrested. I do know that he hasn't been released yet. I have no idea about the charges. I have no idea about what's going on there. Um, but again, I would suggest that there's a very good chance that Dean was targeted because he was one of the people that was flying drones and showing what was happening and documenting what's happening. And as you know at Standing Rock, the people that document what's happening and get the truth out there are targeted in a variety of ways. Um, someone would be proud to wear one and sell them where they work. Hey Mimi, glad you could join us. You're coming in at the end, but you can always watch the replay. T-shirts are walking billboards? Absolutely they are. Why not have all the nations do the ghost dance? Um, you know, I guess you could talk to that more than I could. I, as you guys know, I'm from England, so I don't have the particular native history roots I don't know a lot about this way of life I'm learning quite rapidly um, but maybe that's yeah. something you could talk yeah, about I definitely yeah. think um, you know it's, it's interesting that you say that because just the history of Staining Rock and City and Bull and people think that what's happening right now started in April or August and that actually goes back to the 1800s when when they killed City and Bull and it was to protect the water and it's always been this conflict of economic interests at the expense of indigenous people and indigenous people fighting to stay connected to their prayer which was the ghost dance and to have native sovereignty and not just be exploited for corporate interests you know it was it was the gold now it's the oil and eventually it's going to be the water so we need to fight private privatization of water i mean nestle's is doing that now and Everything indigenous people and their world worldview stays stay connected in more of a balance. So it's the earth, it's the land, it's the water, it's our all living relatives, as well as our spirituality. And um, so it is all connected. And I think that others are are feeling that connection and looking for this worldview that's more more sustainable. Yeah, definitely. And this isn't all theory either because, I mean, there's been things happened recently. You guys will have seen what happened in Corpus Christi. You will have seen what's happening in Baton Rouge down in Louisiana. Um, there was a water, there was an incident in uh, Kansas as well. So there's these incidents all over the place where these pipelines are already leaking, where people are already needing to boil water, where people are already needing to drink bottled water. If you guys follow dapplelies.com with John Bolenball, you'll see all the cases of leukemia that happened after the Enbridge pipe um, had the big leak. And um, they tried to cover that up. And then John originally worked for the oil industry. And now he became a billion dollar whistleblower explaining how the cover-up was done. So these things, this isn't like we're saying doom and gloom, these pipelines are bad, this is what we think. This is what we know because it's happened already. And yes, Flint, Michigan, thank you, Walter. We are very, very aware of Flint, and Flint's not forgotten. And as yeah. part of my mission in this new year, I do want to bring more light to these other places yeah. as well. That's part, that, that's part of it, because to get, as one person, we're not very powerful. But as we come together as people, and we all rise up together peacefully with our words, with our actions, then we can make this change. Because at the end of the day, there may be only the 1% that have the money, but everyone else has the buying rights. Um, so we are going to post some info um, regarding how to donate. So let's, as we draw this to a close, um, here's the things that we need you to do. First thing to do, share this video to get the story out there. 
Second thing to do if you can, donate to the, to the link. Go to freeredfun.com and go to the click on the donate button and donate. If it's $5, it's $5. If it's $1,000, it's $1,000. If you can't donate, share. If you do donate, share. Just share. Get the story out there. And then secondly, keep checking back onto checking back onto my page. I'll keep updates going about this. As we have a link for t-shirts, we'll get that up there for you. As we have more information coming out. Let's keep this story right at the front. Keep it sharing on, on, on Facebook. Um, there are some questions about why mail got returned. And I actually got an email with some pictures of people that have sent mail and had mail come back. Okay. So um, she was transferred from Morton County Jail to Stutzman County Jail, and they did not transfer the information. They didn't transfer any of her mail or any of her belongings. So if it, the mail was sent to Stutzman County, um, it would it would have been returned. It would not have. I mean, if the mail was sent to Morton County, yeah. it would not have been sent forwarded on to Stutzman County. Um, if you've sent it, we'll put the correct address, and if you send it there and it's returned, please take a picture and, and, and then send it on to us so we can ask, like, why are these being sent back to people? You know, why is this mail being returned? Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, again, that's to freeredphone at gmail.com. If you've got mail that's come back to you, let's have pictures of that because once we have the legal representation, that's another thing they can look at because that's not something that's supposed to happen. Everyone that's supposed to be able to have mail sent to them, it's just that's part of your rights, even when you're incarcerated yes you still have rights and those rights are being abused mm -hmm. um i will be we'll, we will be at oak flats um, arizona tomorrow tomorrow evening we're leaving there and then i should be in dc on the 20th advocating for red fawn and bringing awareness and out there speaking about w just everything that's going on and then in san francisco on february 27th or actually, no, I'm sorry, January 27th, I will be in San Francisco for the anniversary of Occupy, Occupy Alcatraz. And so I'll be speaking about Red Fawn there. So anybody that's in San Francisco area, please come support other indigenous people who've been a part of the resistance since, you know, for the past 40 some years. Well, there you go, guys. I guess I just found out I am supposed to be at the inauguration. I've been toying with I'm going or I'm not going, whether that's going to happen. But uh, to continue following this story, I'll, I'll I'll be there. And if possible, I'll live stream what, what uh, Red Dawn has to say so you guys can see that. Um, it looks like maybe San Francisco as well. So um, I guess this road, <laughs> this road trip continues. And we're going to continue to shed the light on what's happening and share this story. So thank you so much, everyone that joined. Please, please keep um, Red Fawn in your thoughts. Um, yeah, next time we interview, maybe we'll try a lapel mic, if I can get a lapel mic, So because I know that uh, Red Dawn is, is quietly spoken. But, you know, that's just who she is. She's just a gentle, uh, just a really gentle, amazing person. I mean, we got to our house late, late last night, and she immediately opened it up for us said hey this is your place come and go please no we've met once or well, twice sorry we met once at standing rock and we met uh, once on new year's eve and we didn't even know we were going to meet then and she's opened her house up and said hey come and stay so you know these are the kind of people that we're dealing with so this is how the world should be guys this is how we're supposed to be with each other we're supposed to feel safe and comfortable and feel connected to everybody and to share love with everybody. And that's what we're looking to do. So thank you for joining. Thank you so much, guys. Continue to share this out. And uh, you guys have a beautiful, beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Was really just welcomed and became a part of the Sacred Stone Camp and um, was, a, was identified as one of the early leaders and working with a lot of the indigenous youth there. So, Absolutely, because it was the Indigenous Youth, it was the International Indigenous yeah. Youth Council and the Standing Rock uh, Sioux Tribe Youth that actually started this whole movement. Yes, yes. So, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk up a little Sorry, bit. Sorry, I'm a bit soft-spoken. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, thank you. Um, so, let's fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, she got arrested on the 11th and she, she like everyone else, she was, yeah. she was bailed out. Mm -hmm. what, what did she see kind of happen? What do you know about the, about the things that happened up at Standing Rock? Um, after that point? Well, there was, a, there was a lot, I mean, the majority of the time people were just really living at the camp and supporting each other, getting awareness out. 
educating people and um, just living within the community. So it, there's a lot of sensationalism of kind of the events that happen, but on your day-to-day -day thing, it was just really beautiful and people were living there, living off the earth, living a sustainable um, lifestyle and getting to know each other and promoting um, information and prayers among each other and just at, you know, encouraging the youth to look at this alternative, um, just alternatives to the oil industry and everything. So Yeah, absolutely. I know when I got up there, one of the very first things I did was I went on a forgiveness march to Mandan. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this would, this would have been after the clearing of the North Camp, which happened, um, that was back on October 28th, 29th, was so, it? So, yeah, so October 27th is the day that the police raided the 1851 treaty camp. This okay. was Red Fawn's camp, and also on the front lines. So um, that kind of, that's when she was arrested, and there, I heard that she had been pretty much attacked, is what, what I got the call, like, I need to get here, your sister's been attacked. Um, we, we think that she's been injured. You need to get here. And I was in... Where, where were you? I was in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Okay. So um, she was kind of advocating and representing our family there. And we would go up periodically. Oh, goody. Hey, guys. Good evening. Afternoon. Morning. Maybe if you're in New Zealand, I think. Um, so I was promised we were coming live with uh, Red Dawn's... Uh, Red Fawn's sister, Red Dawn. Um... She's just wrapping up a call right now, so she's going to be with us in a few few moments. So rather than be late, what I wanted to do was uh, just go ahead and start building an audience. Um, so as you guys come in, uh, why don't we say hello, see where you guys are all from. Hey, my friend from Iowa City. And then once you come in, if you can go ahead and share it, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be on my laptop as well. I'm going to be sharing this out into some groups um, so that we can get a really big audience. And uh, we do also have... Uh, Sophia Walensky's father just joined us. Uh, my good friend Philana, uh, Nana, has uh, joined. Hey guys, so this is absolutely amazing. We've got 500, nearly 600 people on here right now. If you guys can go ahead and please share this as you're coming in straight away, we can get this audience up to a thousand plus before, uh, before we even start the interview. And uh, we've been sat um, talking this afternoon and I've got a, a couple of things uh, <laughs> that I've written down and stuff. So, uh, I see we've got Oklahoma. Hi, Terry. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, your love. Mission. Wow, we've got a bunch of people coming in. If you guys are able to share this into some groups, and as you, I know this is going to be a little bit bitty to start this way, but I'm just going to go to my page, and I'm going to share this to a couple of places as well that I know. Um, and I'll ask you all, if you can, can you invite some friends as well, please? So... I've got a few little places. I'm just going to share this really super quickly because um, I manage a few different pages and we really want to get as many people listening to this as possible because for those of you that don't know who Red Fawn is um, and what, what she's facing, um, she's facing um, some very, very serious charges and there's a lot of things that you already know about the legal system in North Dakota and how the water protectors really haven't been receiving any fair, uh, been receiving fair trial up there or even fair representation. Um, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, make sure her story's out there because there's uh, a lot of fundraisers that have been out there. There's a lot of people that are looking for legal fees. There's a lot of money that's coming for legal fees. And there's been a lot of difficulty um, with people being able to use that money. Um, there's a lot of people that have been having to set up their own things and um, go ahead and be able to raise that money themselves. We've got England in the house, Max Wild. Um, we've got my friend from Eau Claire. Good to see you. We've got Canada with us, Nova Scotia. That's amazing. I'm excited to see all these places. Uh, if you've got friends in other countries, please start, please start inviting them um, as well. What I'm going to do in the comments is I will go ahead and post, uh, and I'll also, my, my girlfriend Stephanie is going to um, be posting some things as well. So I will post a link um, I will post a link myself to um, the fundraiser as well for her um, because there is a fundraiser out there and we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, we see we have Asheville, um, North Carolina with us, Philadelphia. Um, so 
I know I repeat myself quite a lot, but people are joining right now. So what I'm asking you to do is to comment, like, and share. You got it, Eli. Fantastic. The Six Nations are with us in Ontario. Philadelphia, 15 minutes from Tennessee. Hey, D, good to see you, D. Listening from Wales. This is amazing, guys. Keep this, share, keep this sharing going. It's fantastic. If you know any big Facebook groups, get it live into those Facebook groups. Um, I'm just going to share it out to a few places that I'm uh, able to share it into. Um, there's some really big uh, standing rock groups. If people are members of those, please share that out there as well. Um, and uh, we can keep building this audience because we're up to over we're over 750 people. This is a uh, this is great because, as you guys know, um, there have been so many arrests at Standing Rock of the water protectors, um, and there's so many water protectors that are facing, you know, quite serious charges. But of all the charges, Red Fawn is 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 the one who has the most serious charges right now. Um, so we want to talk to you about the story of Red Fawn. I've had a lot of people reaching out and saying, "How can we help her?" So we're going to be sharing some specific things that you can do to help because this is the story that no one knows about. This is the person that completely committed her life to um, social and economic justice. Part of the reason she went down there was one um, to defend Unchi Maka, Mother Earth, and the Mini Wachoni, but also in honor of her her mother, Troylin Yellowwood, who passed away um, this past June. So, um, and Troylin was a long member of the American Indian Movement as well, and again, just advocating for indigenous rights, a member um, attending the United Nations for several years, and mm -hmm. so they just come from a long history of people that are for indigenous rights, environmental justice, social justice, and our family has been involved in the American Indian Movement since the occupation of Alcatraz back in the 1970s, so we have a long history. Wow, so she really grew up around all of this. This yeah. was all, all in her blood, and yeah. um, that, that's amazing. So when did she first go up to Standing Rock? She went in early August when the, I, she had been there maybe a couple days before the initial arrests were, were happening. Okay, so she got up there right. Mm -hmm. I know the initial arrests were around uh, on the 11th of August, and mm -hmm. I know there were some runners that had gone up there initially yeah. to Sacred Stone Camp that had the fire set mm -hmm. up. And yeah. Red, Red Fawn, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't she one of the very first people arrested, that first group of water protectors? Yes, she was. She was one of the first um, female Oglalas that were arrested there. And Absolutely. And that day, if I remember the arrest that day, they, they were arrested basically for praying and, and, and chanting on allegedly trespassing on, 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 on ground. There. Yeah, and th there's video that shows that they didn't actually pass the, the, the line, but... Um, they were, you know, they were arrested, and it was um, pretty. It was a lot different dynamic then. Um, it's since escalated, but absolutely. So, I mean, you mentioned it was a different dynamic. So, mm -hmm. when she first got up there, being mm -hmm. one of the first water protectors, mm -hmm. there were literally what fifty, hundred, well, maybe a hundred, a hundred yeah. people up there, mm -hmm. and that they have been there since probably April, um, right? In April and. She went there and immediately just because of our family's history. You know, a lot of people aren't aware of exactly what happened. The people know that she went to court um, for some state charges and there's lots of things that have been spoken about about those charges. So what we want to do is we want to introduce you guys, let you know a little bit about who Red Fawn is, um, why she was at Standing Rock, what her beliefs are, what happened on that day, the things leading up to that day, um, and also to be able to then talk about what's happening now for her and what she's going to be facing in the future um, and how you guys can come on board. So that's fantastic. You've got 845 of you. Keep sharing this out. We're building a great audience. And, um, you know, I'm just going to be chatting with her, with her sister, Red Dawn. Now, Red Dawn isn't, um, she isn't a professional person who interviews all the time. She's just like you guys sat at home. None of us are professionals in this. We're just sharing the story. So don't expect like some professional interview. It's just going to be some friends talking. Um, if I refer to a laptop, there's a laptop down in front of us as well. Um, so, you know, guys, um, we're not journalists. We're just uh, we're just here to try and help do what's right and to uh, share to share this story and make sure it's known. So, um, whenever you're ready, if you want to come and sit on the couch with us here, I'll scoot across and uh, yeah, just come join us. We're just going to have a chat. So guys, for you that don't know, um, 
This is Red Thorn's sister. This is Red Dawn. Hi, Madakiapi Chaje Ni Chwaki Red Dawn. Um, Amachapi. So when did we first meet? Um, we met several several weeks ago uh, down in Standing Rock um, when I first went down there to start advocating for, for my sister. So in, in Lakota way, Red Fawn is, is my sister. We're actually first cousins, but we've been raised as, as sisters. And so I'm... Well, awesome. Well, why don't you tell us, I mean, you said she's... You're raised in the Lakota way, so mm -hmm. you're considered as sisters. Tell us a little bit about Red Fawn. How old's Red Fawn? So Red Fawn is in her uh, her mid thirties. She is a human rights advocate, a member of the American Indian Movement in Denver. She grew up in Denver, Colorado, and has been um, a, b a big advocate for indigenous youth. She's 